you, Dan, and I want to welcome <coughs> everyone to tonight's contest. Fellow Toastmasters, are we having fun yet? Yeah. yeah. Ready to dive into some interesting technology and fun things. You figure you come to a Tech Masters Club, we got to have overheads, we got to have our little gadgets and gizmos so that we can kind of keep track of things. And I am no different because I joined te uh, Toastmasters a good, well, back in 1991. Joined Realtors 2512, and I was a Toastmaster for oh, a, a long time. And I kept doing it, I loved it. And I was a computer programmer, and I was wanted to get into technical speaking. And I got the opportunity when Microsoft offered me the chance to come and be a technical presenter for them. So what I did was, when I took this job, was I became an, a, what they call an MSDN evangelist, which goes out and does these four-hour seminars for a technology. And so if you think about it, you take a five to seven minute speech, and you just string 24 of them together. <laughs> <laughs> now, the gentleman who hired you, his name is Mike O'Neill. And when we got started, he said, you know what? We've got some ideas and things that you can put into the back of your mind when you're giving these presentations. And so I want to share with you tonight what those are. And these are Mike O'Neill's 10 commandments for giving a technical presentation. And so really, how do I go out and deliver a great technical presentation? A lot of challenges. What is it that we need to do? We're talking about having... You know, gadgets and gizmos, you have visual aids. There's a lot of challenges for working with this stuff. So number one, begin with an end in mind. If you don't know where you're going, chances are you'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Always think through what is it the takeaway that you want your audience to leave with. Is it that they can take this technology home and start with this tonight? Or is it you know, some other message? But you have to be thinking, where is it we're going to go when people leave this room? What are you going to take out of this speech that you might be useful to you later on? <clears throat> Always begin with an end in mind. Number two, and this is, I've got on your 25 slide limit, but I'm talking about PowerPoints. I'm talking about these visual aids. And I, a 25 slide limit for a four-hour presentation. Think about that. Four hours, 25 slides, do the math. That's a lot of time per slide, isn't it? Which means that PowerPoint shouldn't be your presentation. People should be able to sit there and read your presentation deck and, and be distracted from what your message is. The message is you getting out in front and talking with people and kind of sharing what it is that you've got. PowerPoint is a crutch that too many people fall into, and they feel like they've got to clear the slide. Every point is part of that. You'll find tonight's presentation, given that I've only got seven minutes to deliver it, is one slide. Well, two if you count my, my introduction slide. But it really is, you, you need to be able to have a story for each slide that you're going through. And if you're going to have a message that's maybe longer than five or six words on a point, use a picture. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. Find some good images. And use PowerPoint to your advantage. But don't, don't use PowerPoint as your presentation. Number three. Start with the best demo, exactly one minute into the presentation. So at 1 o'clock we start, and at 101 I'm doing my absolute best demo. Knock the socks off, have fun, show them the whiz bang, the fireworks are all going, everything is happening, people are loving it, and then you got to drop those jaw dropping demos every five to seven minutes to keep the interest. Otherwise you're going to lose people. So you start out by showing what is it you're going to have when you get done. And a lot of times we're going out and we're building code, we're building software, and so I want to show the finished product. And then we go back and start through the steps of what do I need to do in order to get to that point. That way people have an idea where you're going to go with it. Number four, continuously quiz the audience for retention. Yes, I am reading the slides too, but you know what? I think that's kind of good because, you know, what is it that we've talked about so far? What's the number one rule? Yeah. Right, begin with an end in mind. And if we think through that and we think about, is PowerPoint our friend or does it have to augment our message? But continuously quiz the audience because it should be a give and take. It shouldn't be, I'm up here lecturing. It's not a pedagogic approach to saying, okay, I'm out here to do this. You're using more of an of a interactive kind of a thing. Especially if you're going four hours. That's a long time. Make sure you take breaks. That's one of the points that's not on here. Uh, number five, engage in meaningful conversation. You know, you get up and you're talking to people. Hey, how about those Vikings? Anyone watch Fred Farr? Wasn't that cool? <laughs> oh, I love the way that you threw that pass and go, two seconds left. I mean, whoa, what a, what a game. I just put five minutes of my presentation time that I could have been talking about something useful. Engage in meaningful conversation, which means that if you ask the audience questions, how many people have been in Toastmasters for more than 10 years? So you should already know that you never ask a question without saying, 
that there's a reason why I asked that question. Half the audience has been here for that long, so you all should know that that's how that works. If you're going to engage in meaningful conversation, make sure it's a two-way street. The 3 two, one rule comes down to when you're talking about technology, a lot of times it's interesting concepts that are introductory to some. Some are a little bit deeper. And sometimes you need to go really deep and show something that no one else knows so that people can learn something. But you need to drop through every presentation you give. You need to have the 3 two, one rule. Three 100-level ideas, two, two to 300-level ideas, and one 400-level idea. Number seven, tell a story throughout, because if you can tell a story, it goes from the beginning, from how I got started in this and how I started working with Mike O'Neill, all the way through today, how I'm standing here in front of you with the Techmasters shirt on, because I really believe in Toastmasters and I love the club and the idea. You can tell a story that will flow all the way from beginning to end and actually make the whole speech flow all the way through. Number eight, call to action. When you get done with the presentation, you sat through a presentation and it's like, they get done and they walk away. It's like, I really want to do that, but how do I get started? Make sure you've got a call to action slide. If you're, if you're using PowerPoint, that should be your, your next step. What is it you're going to do? Go out to my site, bankotips.com, and you can download this slide back, and you can use it for your own presentations if you want. Um, I always do that. I always have other things that are the next step. So you can call to action. Get people to get out there and take advantage of what it is you talked about. Make recommendations. This is where you're on stage. You're the person in front. Everyone's listening to you. Why are they listening to you? Because you're the expert. You know your topic probably better than anyone else in the world make recommendations. Jerry Wiseman wrote a great book about how to give a technical presentation, actually how to build the PowerPoints and how to structure everything. I was talking with Jerry when he came to our demo <coughs> office to do a seminar for us on how you put this together. I would highly recommend that you read his book, Present to Win, by Jerry Wiseman. And I'm serious, that's a great book. But make recommendations because you are the expert. And number 10, preparation. If you're giving a presentation and you've got technical demos, chances are it may blow up halfway through. Trust me, it blows up halfway through. When it does, have your backup that you can turn on at a moment's notice and go to and show the finished product should you have to. Know what your fallback plan is and live through that. If you go through these 10 commandments, fellow Toastmasters, you will give a great technical presentation and you'll knock their socks off and you're going to have fun doing it. So thank you very much.